Can you guys see me? Because you know I'm new to this. Can y'all see me? Can everybody see me? If you can see me, give me a thumbs up. Let me see one up, one thumbs up. So I know we're cooking. Hey, Kosha. Y'all see me? All right, good. I just want to thank everybody for taking time out of your busy night to hop on with us. I don't have my better half today. Oh, she she is she's monitoring. So say hi to Rainy, y'all. And then um that way she can talk to y'all so I can keep up with the interview. All right. All right, so without further ado, oh, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Kamisha. Kamisha Reviews created that uh, that little pregame I just showed you guys. So um, thank you, Kamisha. She does help mentor people in the YouTube space. Make sure you guys follow her page, Kamisha Reviews. She's always talking about all the hot topics and reality TV and things of that nature. All right, so... Um, I'm going to bring up Dr. McAllister now, and we're going to just have a nice little conversation. Hold on one second. There she is. Here I am. Hey, hey Jamie. I think we, I think we cooking. We cooking. You nervous. doing it. I was a little nervous messing with, <clears throat> messing with this stuff. You got this. You got this. First of all, thank you for even joining me tonight. It's a, it's thank a, you for having me. No problem. And what, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Real good today. Today was an excellent day. Okay. How about good. you? Uh, a little busy. Just raining every five seconds. It's driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm going to let a little few more people get on. I know the, the Wizards game probably going to go off, so I don't want to want to um, get started too early. Um, you had a lot of clients today. How'd that go? I had two clients today, but I taught a class similar to the class I taught you, but this one was for um, people who work in the mental health field, but maybe not clinicians. So like the receptionists, um, the people who, you know, might take, you know, intake, things like that, okay, but teaching good. them how to deal with people in a in much better way. Gotcha. So how you enjoying your superstar? You like to talk to the Talk of the town, the internet, the the uh, medical scene, the mental health scene. Like you just a big deal right now. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, it, it's fun, right? Even like having lunch with you, I I, I was like, whoa, that's a lot. But it was, yeah. you know, it, it's kind of fun. But the main thing that I'm enjoying is the comments, right? The comments that people are making in your inbox and in my inbox, things that people are saying to me about the seriousness of mental health. They, they're so excited that the show featured this. They're really um, amazed at your level of vulnerability. Um, and I think that that right there does my heart good because you know I know that mental health is serious. I see it every day um, because I work in the field, um, but I think you know it's kind of <laughs> underestimated um, of how real, how bad it is or how, you know, much in pain people are and, you know, hats off to you because that wasn't easy. What you did mental illness still really has a stigma or mental health issues. Cause it's not always an illness. Sometimes it's just, you know, we got stuff and we all got stuff. So really seeing people move towards healing is exciting for me. Right. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, and, and, and you ain't lying. We're going to talk about that tonight these comments and these inboxes because I share them with you and Jay as well. Um, it's been overwhelming, you know, and I, and I know, you know, law enforcement is kind of what we focus on, on the show, but like you said, it's, it's so much broader than just law enforcement. Um, it is. Fire, fire department, um, postal workers, like these customer service careers are so stressful and, I just feel like this can benefit, you know, everybody who deals with customer service in these stressful environments. And until until we did that conversation and actually filming that, like I I was the typical like ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm good, you know. It is what it is. I signed up for it as we all say. But um, nah. I mean, when you really sit back and, and let you break it down, and you really like, damn, that's that's PTSD, like. 
Yeah. I'm still I'm still on the battlefield and I'm yeah. not. Exactly. I want to share an interesting statistic because when I read it, it floored me. But the average person experiences about four traumatic events over their lifetime. So we're talking age zero to like maybe 85, 90 years old average. Right. Some people experience more, some people might experience less, depends on where you live and how you live in, right? But right. police officers in general experience 44 in during their career. So that's age 21 to maybe 45 or 50. 44, that's a lot of traumatic events. But like you said, most police officers will say to themselves, I'm all right. I'm good. I do not want to go to EAP. I do not want to talk to the uh, mandated clinician. Um, you know, and so people don't get their issues taken care of. And for first responders, it's really important, but it's really important for everybody because we're not living our best life, right? Like I take the to heart um, Jill Scott song, living my life like it's golden. Well, it's not going to be golden if my mental is not intact. And that's what I really want for everybody. We have this stigma because, you know, we do call it an illness because it, it can be an illness, but there are things that just happen in life, just trying to live life where really we get stuck and people are afraid to go to a therapist, but a therapist can be a life changing experience. I have lots of clients who say, you know, they wish they would have come earlier. You know, they wish they would have, you know, talked about things earlier just to get healed because we, we carry a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I was trying to let it get up around 50 or so people and we're around there now. And okay. I know you're joining. And I know Raina's listening. So Raina, if you could, um, if somebody has a question, in the middle of us talking, can you pop it into the where we can see it and then either depending on who the question is to, we can address it. Thank you, wifey. And everybody say hi to Raina. She's managing the chat tonight. Hey Raina. Normally she's sitting beside me, but she left me hanging tonight. She left oh. you in good hands. She left you in good hands. She did. She did. I agree. I agree. So I think the first question I just had was for the people tuning in. Who is Dr. McAllister? Well, I am a lot of things. First of all, I'm from New Jersey. I'm not from the DMV, um, but I've been here for quite a number of years. I've been married for 32 years this year. Um, I'm a mother. Um, I'm a homicide survivor. Um, in 2017, my daughter was killed by gun violence, talking about like life-changing issues. Um, I'm a therapist. I've been a therapist for over 30 years. I've done mostly emergency mental health, which is why, you know, my my passion or I say I super serve first responders is because I work side by side with law enforcement um, and, and um, medical emergency medical emergency personnel for over 30 years. Um, so I have a heart for people who are responding to the community. I kind of coined myself as a public safety strategist because everything I do is around public safety, whether it's mental health. Um, my husband and I started a gun violence um, nonprofit. Um, so, you know, I'm all about gun violence and, and community safety. And I do a lot of work in the trauma space because I believe that violence is a trauma response. The reason why our community and particularly black community is so violent now and it's getting younger and younger is because we have unhealed trauma that we have not addressed. Not to mention that America is just has a wicked gun culture that makes having a gun for young black boys very sexy and appealing. Um, and so just really trying to come up with strategies to say that because we should all be able to be safe in our communities. We should feel safe with the police. We should feel safe from each other. Um, and really just work around healing. So I always say I'm a, uh, I'm a hope, I'm a hope dealer. Like I'm out here dealing hope. Yeah, I love it. Um, okay. I like that. All right. And um, just to give a little background on me, for those who don't know, I am Jamie and I'm from the DMV, um, and I did 25 years in Washington, D.C. as a police officer. Um, thank you for your service. Thank you. I appreciate it. My first um, 
my first three years were at the first district down in the Southwest area in, in uh, 98. Um, anybody from DC knows how Southwest was back in those days, drugs, violence, uh, clubs. I mean, you name it, it was, it was down there. Um, from there, I ended up going to the narcotics division, which was a major narcotics division for the entire DC, where we went on <clears throat> daily, what they call by bus operations. And uh, we did it in every high crime area in throughout the city, Northwest, Southeast, Northwest, Northeast, Southeast. And uh, I did that up until 2008 to where I made detective. Uh, once I made detective, I went over to the seventh district as a district detective, and over there, primarily just investigating robberies, domestic violence, assaults, uh, shootings. Not all any shooting, as long as they didn't, they weren't deceased. Um, we kept those cases. If they ultimately died or was appearing to have gone die, they went to homicide. Um, I stayed over there for four years doing that. Did pretty good. Got a call from um, Homicide Division in 2012. And that's when I went over there and stayed there for about five and a half years till 2017. Um, of course, you know, that's we didn't meet there, but that's how our lives kind of uh, crossed paths back in those days. And we'll talk about that later. Um, from there, I went over to, to the Sex Offender Registry Unit, which is a unit that just kind of monitors um, convicted sex offenders and keeping them in compliance and making sure they check in with their POs or court supervision, things of that nature. And um, when they got out of compliance, then we ended up having to do warrants for them or bring them back in compliance. So that was my career in a quick, short nutshell. Um, any questions? Uh, I see it's a question. It might be for you, wait a minute. And RPC, real people, I appreciate that. Um, Zandria, you see this question? Mm hmm. Can you talk about untreated trauma? Oh, well, most of them. Was that the one you were talking about? Yeah. Well, Many of us have traumatic experience. Some people think if you, you've had to go through combat or you've had to have been raped or something really awful, but anything that kind of jars you, that um, moves you off your equilibrium can be a traumatic experience. And we all experience trauma differently. Like Jamie and I could go through the same thing and one of us to be traumatized and the other one, it doesn't bother them. What really determines if it's a traumatic experience for us is the amount of coping skills we have and how we use those, but also the resources we have. So if I have the resources and the ability to cope with what's happening, I'm not really traumatized. It's when my coping skills don't measure up to what's happening and I don't have the resources for immediate symptom relief. And then I might have some disruptions in my life, like inability to sleep, um, ruminating thoughts that, you know, or intrusive thoughts that keep coming to my mind, irritability, which is what we see often in the community. So when you see people who are constantly irritated, right, like for no apparent reason or easily irritated, low frustration tolerance, and a lot of times it's because of untreated trauma. And it might not be in a, a, a huge traumatic event, but just something that they can't you know, they didn't have the resources to cope with or to get through. Um, and so people don't want to be ill. So a lot of times people walk around with untreated trauma because people don't want to be ill. People don't want to talk about it. People want to kind of stuff it and act like it don't exist until it bubbles over. And so we have a lot of untreated trauma in our community. Um, and you can see it like you can see it even on um, like I see it in police officers, but even when you watch Love and Marriage DC, not having a good relationship, right, can be a traumatic event. Feeling abandoned could be a traumatic event. And so how people show up in a everyday life is untreated trauma. And so like, that's a great example. You all are, all of the people on today are viewers of the show. You can see what untreated trauma looks like, and it doesn't have to look like a mental illness. You can be beautiful and have lots of resources and be on television and be famous, but that trauma going to show up. Well, I mean, 
it's no secret. I know who you're talking about. This might we just might as well talk about. It. <laughs> I, I have a cast mate. I feel like you have in mind from what you've been watching, and and I would love to get your insight on what you're watching. Well, you know, first of all, of course, you know, I'm always about my my thing is space for grace, right? We got to give people space for grace because how people show up, there's always the backstory, right? There's always something like what we see is the mean girl. We see somebody who's like, you know, treating other people nasty and talking about people and can't get along with people and not taking accountability. That's what we see. But what's the backstory? And luckily um, in, in Love and Marriage DC, we actually get a piece of the backstory, like feeling abandoned from your mom, right? Like that's, that can be huge, right? And so, you know, a lot of times, and I'm a therapist, my family gets on me all the time. Like you give people too much room, you, you know, and I get it, but I, I really consider the backstory of what else happened to that person. How did they get there? Because I would want somebody to give it to me, you know, like, Many people have a very a very good relationship with their parents. Maybe their parents were amazing or they feel like their parents were amazing, even if they weren't. So, again, it's not the traumatic experience. It's how you feel about it. Right. Because there are kids who are in foster care who no question had awful parents. But that kid didn't feel that their parent was awful. So it's, that's not a traumatic event for them. Maybe being taken away from their parent is the trauma for them. Right. So, again, it's how you feel about um, the trauma. And I really wish, you know, people could like own up to their stuff and get healed. Right. And it's not just your castmate. It's, it's a lot of people who walk around with like a chip on their shoulder. And fortunately for me, I get to help them dig deep and figure out what that was and then really start working on healing the little girl or the little boy inside. Cause that's who's showing up. It's the 16 year old kid who got abandoned by their mother is showing up. And so when you see this, I don't know how to get along with people. I'm not going to take responsibility for my actions. It's the 16 year old that's showing up. That was hurt. Not the, I don't know how old she is or, or not just her. Cause it's not just her, but I don't know how old people are, but it's, it's like, how do we get healed? How do we, you know, go to somebody and be very vulnerable. Like you, you did it on TV, which was huge. But like in a space where you're sitting with a therapist, how do you just go and lay it out on the table and be open for feedback? That's another thing. People are very sensitive to feedback. And a lot of times that's a trauma response. If we can be open to feedback, we could grow, right? But we become defensive. Um, again, that's our little boy, little girl inside that's like, no, I don't want to be wrong. Yeah. And I actually speak on it on the show. I say, I feel like I'm in high school. Like, there's no way we should be at episode 10 this weekend and we haven't resolved something from the, the mid-season finale. And, and it's so minor, like, just the simple as who brought you on the show. Like, all of us in this in this space know how this works to get on these shows. You're pitched to Carlos King. Carlos King interviews you with his – well, he doesn't even do it. Stan does it. And – I guess he has the final say who who comes and who doesn't. And that and mm -hmm. we all went for it. And then with the new couple, we all sent the name. She sent them, we sent them, and they went through the same process. So it it makes no sense that we're still mad at people over over this this topic. And I mean you hit it on the head. It's like it's like I felt like I was in the twelfth grade again. Like but do you know what it really is? And I don't know if you're, if the audience is familiar with it's the tip of the iceberg, right? Like on the iceberg, we see, and it might be a massive tip, like you can see the top of the iceberg, but what we don't see is what's underwater. And that part that we don't see is usually massive, right? And so what you see is somebody fussing about, I brought you on the show, I'm jealous, I'm not jealous, or you're, you know, that, like you said, high school, but that's not really what it is, right? Like, that's just, that's that's what's coming up. And for them, you know, that's, that's, that's what they see, but that's, it's way more stuff than that. It's way more stuff. Yeah, I think we all, I know, I, I can be on, I, I know a lot of people think we knew, um, the Silvers for all these many years, and we turned our back on them for the petties. I see all these comments, but the actual truth is, I had a business relationship with her husband. Mm -hmm. 
15 or so years. DJ, never been over their house, didn't talk on the phone. I talked to him or his manager all those years, never just kicking in, oh, meet me for a drink. In the events, yeah, we talked, um, took pictures, all that. I think we met his wife a few times, a couple times, not a handful over those over that those that, that decade and a half. And um so I knew nothing about her her past with her mom, what's going on in their house, none of that, until she said it on on national TV. And you know, me outside looking in, I mean you you spot on it it's it's it's, her, it's that it's all that in her past that's got us where we are today. And, and I, sad, think, I think there's some other stuff too, but yeah definitely the mom stuff is big. Yeah, and I mean, we just as a castmate, we are just like, I, I like, you can't believe we're we're still arguing about the same stuff, you know. And it's it's just frustrating. And I just want to get your insight on if you could actually sit down and talk to her. Like, I'm sure you have a lot to say. Yeah, you know, again, um, coming from a place of like, how do we heal? Who? you know, what's wrong, right? Like, 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 let's look at what's uncomfortable, what's wrong in this space. I want, I want to jump back to something when you said like what people are saying and that you turned your back and stuff like that. You know what? Sometimes you got to turn your back on people. Sometimes people are toxic and there's a question, how long do you give for grace? You, I mean, I give grace infinity forever, but that don't mean you get to stay around me. That don't mean you get to have access to me, right? Because if you toxic, I'm going to pray for you away from you, right? And that I think that's important. Like if people are toxic, if people don't bring out the best in me, they can't be around me. They do not have access to me. And I don't care who it is because it can be a parent. It could be a family member, a spouse, a child, your own adult child, right? Like you don't get to have access to me if you don't know how to treat me. And if you're not bringing out the best in me. And I also make sure that when I'm around people that I'm also not antagonizing. I'm not poking the bear. Right. Like I know things that might be sensitive to you. So I'm not going to, you know, be around you and do that. But you got to be in a healthy place to do that. Right. Because healthy people don't do stuff like that. So even when I look at like the interactions and you say things to somebody else and you know, it's like it's not nice or like it's rude. It's, you know, it's it's, it's ugly. It's mean. Right. Like you poking a bear. But what is that about? Hurt people hurt other people. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Right. So that toxicity, that toxicity, I don't want around my space. So I'm very protective of my peace. Right. So for Caribbean princess, how long do you give it? You give it forever. Right. But you don't, that don't mean they have access to you. Right. Like you have to remove yourself. I don't, I don't ask my therapist cause I have one too. Um, how long are they going to keep doing this to me? No, I'm stopping it. I'm stopping what they doing to me. Cause I, they don't know how to treat me. <laughs> And I'm leaving the situation, whatever the situation is. And I think, you know, a lot of times we want people to stop doing what they're doing, but they're not going to stop if they don't get healed. It's up to me to remove myself. So I, I'm, I'm glad if you felt like it's too much, it's not about turning your back. And hopefully people can hear that. Right. But the environment is toxic because if it's not because it's not. I mean, you you and Irena are caught up in it this time, but last season it was the other couple. <laughs> this season it's the Patties. Next season, y'all, you know, who is it going to be? So those types of things, like when you start seeing Oprah Winfrey and Maya Angelou say, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them, right? And you can pray from a, pray for them from a distance. Yeah, you hit that right on the head because when you look at everything going on. You got, I always say it's a TV show. So some of this got to be for TV. Like I understand the business of reality TV. Like, like, I, like I've told you, like if Rain and I have a back and forth right now with no cameras on, I'm like, right, get out of my face. I don't want to talk about it. But when that camera's in there, you're going to have that conversation and you need to resolve it so the audience can say, this is how you, a married couple of 20 something plus years, resolves their issue. They want to see that. And yeah. I feel like, like you said, we, we're around this, these people for three to six months filming. And Brandon, y'all not seeing everything. These scenes are hours. You know, you film one. Of yes. Two, and you know they're hours and it, it come down to these many minutes. Right. So 
So I say, okay, is this shady for TV or you really just toxic? And, and I think it got to a point, like you said, where for me and Ryan, we was just like, that's who she is. Like, and I think at the Christmas party, that whole get out away from me, you went to her, all that. Right now, it was like, nah, we, um, we ain't doing this. And that was two raw reactions in those things. That wasn't for TV. Like, right now, it's like, I don't deal with people like that. You know, and she'll tell yourself, like, I, I can't do that. Like, you doing that to me on TV? Like, no, nah, we can't be cool. And, and, and that's where we are. So that's why when they say, y'all turn y'all back, no, we, we just can't do it no more. Like, we don't know what these people will say now on TV for clout, ratings, whatever, or just that's just who they are. So we'd rather not even deal with it no more. And, and you got to remember, this was 12 months ago. Yeah. So what you're watching now is last year this time. We ain't talked to them since then. Like, since mm-hmm. back then. Yeah. So it's just crazy, but it's a it's a tough environment to be in. When, and, and we're considered co-workers so we're, we're business partners and we just want to move on for the betterment of the show and we can't because it's like i'm not letting this shit go and it's it's just my well part. it really does have potential to really work on um the things because even the scene with you and your son was very helpful for a lot of parents it was very helpful right and you know i'm looking at it differently than maybe the average person i think the, the what you did also um talking about the police the comments that we both got was uh, were amazing like people really got to see themselves in your vulnerability and i think even with your co um coworker and the parent like that that's an because those that's real that those mommy issues that's a real thing in our community and what i would love to see is for her and her mother really to be able to get together and work it out and you know other people can see that they can do it because there are lots of people there this that's not that's not strange it might not be abandonment it might have been that you were too strict it might have been that oh you preferred your boyfriend or that somebody molested me and you never said nothing you know what i'm saying you didn't protect me it could be any number of things but there are lots of issues in our community that her and her mom working through could really help the community and like for me for the reality tv show like I know people, you know, the the arguing, the ratings, and you know, people kind of like that. But I think when we see real stuff and people can take have a takeaway from a reality TV show, which I think our episode did. I also think the episode with you and your son, it really spoke volumes to people because those son and dad issues or you wanting the best for your son but your son going a different way especially with the um nowadays when you have so many young people who smoke weed the millennials are just a different group of people right and like our age group don't really understand them that's real in our that's you real preach. you better <laughs> preach good god my <laughs> You know, that stuff is real. And, you know, if we can work through those issues on TV, you know how many people would be like, you know what, if he could do it, I could do it. Or, you know what, maybe therapy ain't as scary as I thought. You know, those types of conversations are starting to be had. And it it really has a potential to be amazing. Yeah, you. I mean, you you hit that on the head. And I think I kept catching a bad rap because... They was mistaking me for anger and mean and bully and drinking, like like everything. No, it's my passion to have my namesake successful because I know what's going on outside this door. He may think he do, but it only takes one time to be wrong. You and you know I know. Yeah, you know I know. Yeah. Right. You got and, one time that either the boys come to get you or the streets going to get you. And I'm sure you talk to Ayana like, be careful, don't don't do this, don't it. Like I used to tell him, stay out of DC. But just yeah. like when I was 20 some years old, my dad was like, stop going to DC at these clubs late at night. Da, da, da. It was violent in the 80s and 90s. And what I do, go right in DC. And guess what happened? Remember, like yesterday, 1992, I had a photo act. Rams on it. I'm working. I'm working for the Drug Enforcement Administration. 20 years old, doing my thing. 
He said, stay out of DC with that cop. It's, it's this, it's this, it's this. And what I do, go right to the club. I'm in the club. Anybody old like me know about the clubhouse back in the day. You remember clubhouse? That club uptown? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They got Roosevelt. I'm in there and they call my tag out. Paper tag, da 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 Accurate legend. And I was like, and I tell my buddy, well, if I got to move, you got to move. We, we in front of each other. We come outside, his car's gone, and mine is running with the window busted out. You know what it was like to have to call my father at four in the morning to say, I'm at 4th District doing a police report. And he said, you are a dumb mf -er. I told you that, 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 that. I take everybody home, man. We soaking wet. It's freezing outside. And now I got to get my window fixed. My ignition popped. And, and, I, and, and I think that's what, like, Back in it, <clears throat> back then, that our generation, you only got to me once, and then I learned my lesson. This generation today, like you said, they 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 think they invincible, and it's like y'all y'all. No, we've been here before. We've been here way longer. You. That's why we're telling you this. Like it's not to hurt you. And, right. and when I got mad at my son on that on that scene, that was about like real life stuff. Like I'm saying, like. Mm -hmm. Like we had a real conversation because that was really ongoing in our yeah. household. Yeah. And like you said, yeah, I did get a million messages from parents. Yeah. And you know what else too? Um, and I, I think I asked you this, um, and I think they showed this. Are you the police at home or are you dad? Right. Because even me, I have to look at myself. Like my kids don't need a therapist right now. They need a mommy. Right. And there is a difference. Right. Because I'm my, I'm being a mom from my profession because it's who I am. And the same thing, it's hard to put that police. You you done you done um, told a mother her kid got killed and then you got to go home and deal with your kids. And you don't want that for them. But you know that they're putting themselves in those positions. It's a very it's hard to break away from that. But it's necessary. Right. Because they need the dad and not the police. That's a very real conversation for many officers. Most of my clients are law enforcement and first responders. And so that like that's a very and even for the um, female cops. Right. That's a very real conversation that, you know, raising children that we have to have. Yeah. Well, like I mean, and that's what I'm saying. I, I love to see, you know, like and you can't get realer than that. You can't get realer than that. Yeah. That, that episode Top notch was the number one topic relevant episode of the entire two, three seasons, whatever you want to call it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a few scenes that kind of hit, but that right there, and it took a lot for me. And um, and then that segue into how you and I met. Um, um, I guess I well, I can start off. So how we met, guys, in 2022, I was taking a class. What was the actual class called? Um, crisis intervention officer training. Yeah. A so, week long class. Yeah. So one particular day was Dr. McAllister's class and I was kicking and screaming. I was there all week and I said, crisis intervention. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to be in there playing on my phone for eight hours. It was or whatever it was, but what, what, what stood out to me was when you started talking about the supervisors and these personalities. And when you started, and I saw your PowerPoint, it was like you were literally talking to me, dead in my face. Cause I dealt with those supervisors and I dealt with those mood swings. Then you touched on your, your home life. Like all that was resonating with me. And um, and I think I came up to you on a break or after class, something like that. And I and no, this was, well, once um, you told me, you started talking about Ayana. Then it all made, I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know. I never met her mom. But um, just to bring you guys up to speed, um, Dr. McAllister's daughter was um, fatally shot back in 2017 in D.C. Um, it, was, it was a, you know, guys shooting at nobody, just shooting, and she was unfortunately struck and, and later um, was found deceased from her injuries. Um, I was on the scene of that. Um, I didn't meet you or your husband because the lead detective did the notification, I'm assuming, or one of our other partners. Because once those things happen, we all spread out and 
get to work trying to figure out what happened. And my task was to interview the young man who I guess was rapping or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we immediately dealt with him to see if he knew anything. And then the next day, my task was the autopsy. And um, that's what I did the next day and did the paperwork and, and on that. And um, so we never actually met. Mm-hmm. And, and then I ended up leaving homicide shortly thereafter. Mm-hmm. So, and I remember um, t- we were talking about the show because I had never heard of the show and never seen the show. Um, and we were talking about it. You said, you know what? I want to pitch you for the show because you, you'll be good. I'm like, yeah, I love that. Um, and then I told you I had been on a another reality TV show because my daughter was killed. And then you said, she played basketball? She went to Largo? And I'm like, how you know that? Yeah. And when you told me how you do it, I was like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah, and it's so yeah. a year, but approximately it took me about a year later um, to be on the show, and then another year for them to, to air the episode. But um, you know, I always say that Ayana's my angel, and she still be looking out for me. She's still making things happen. Um, so it was not, you know, a coincidence that we would that we would meet and, and actually happen to talk about her because most of the time I never talk about her, like when I'm training and doing my classes. So that's, um that's right. yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, literally, when you said, and you knew who I was, I recall, right? No, 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 I didn't know. I thought you knew I, I was on the show. No, Melvin told me, my my partner, the uh-huh. other officer told me. And then I went, I said, oh, let me check the show out because I'm not, I, I got a lot going on. I don't really watch a lot of TV, but um, I checked the show out and really liked it. Like, I, um, I thought, and it, this is what I'm saying about like how this can work. I thought the three couples in the first season, y'all all had like different marriage issues, right? right? Nothing necessarily bad, but like it resonated with me having been married, I think at that time, 30 years, right? Like at that time, I'm like, oh, okay. And it, it was great conversation for me and my husband watched it together. And it was an opportunity for us to have some really good conversations. So like the reality TV thing really can definitely work to, to, to help people. Um, but, and I even think even with all of the drama, it still helps people. It, it may be help people to see, maybe I should check myself out. Maybe, I, maybe I'm maybe i a mean person. Maybe I'm doing something different. Bingo. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's kind of was, was my take from season one to what y'all mm-hmm. see now is because I know my personality. You've been around me. I don't do all this arguing and bickering. That's not really my thing, but... As I said on the show, I don't really have a middle. I haven't developed that middle. So it's either I'm not bothering you or we at war. And that middle is what I what I got out of our therapy and and, and still ongoing. It's like trying mm-hmm. to just calm down. Even people that know I be in the comments and I get the fussing, it's because I, I see something and I see something disrespectful and I can't. Sometimes it's hard for me to ignore it. It's like, no, say something because that's all you know. That's all I've been doing is yeah. addressing whatever is irritating you or, or confrontation. But it's also your passion, right? Like it really is your passion and passion can be misunderstood for anger, right? And I think like that's some of the, sometimes with, between a spouse, between spouses that that can be the mistake or even between you and your son, right? You passionate about his life. You want yeah. him to live. You don't want to have to bury a child. Nobody wants that. And so it's your passion, but it looks like it's angry. And then, you know, he's a young person coming into his own. So it's not unusual because even if you weren't a police, that when, when our children grow up and start trying to do things on their own because they're not doing what we want them to do, it becomes a struggle. Like that's a very real type of event, right? Like that we usually get through. And even you say, even with you and your father, y'all had the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. But even when your car got broken into and everything else happened, even though you didn't listen to your father, who'd you call? Your father, right? Because we understand the roles and we grow out of those too. Like you, you and your son are going to grow out of like beefing, all, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this is it's appropriate that y'all beefing. Y'all got two, y'all going down two different roads. And so, you know, we we got to look at those types of things um, and not just bash. And then also everybody weighing in on your life. <laughs> Stop listening to the people. They don't know your life. Cause I'm I, you know, you you do get to you do tend to look at people in on TV and and develop 
opinions about them, but I've seen you and your wife without the cameras, right? right. Like y'all are the most genuine, caring, and most helpful people, right? Like that's that's what I'm seeing. Right. And you and you didn't have to do it. There was no camera. There's nobody to impress. Right. Like I'm just one person. Um, and I and I just got to see your heart. And even uh, and I was glad we did the scene. I'm glad they they showed what they showed, because I think people got to see a different view of you and a human side of you. Not that you're party promoter that's on TV or that you're this. Um, police detective that's now drinking, right? Like th they got to see, like you got a, a you a real person, you a heart, and I think sometimes we miss that with people on TV. Yeah, and I think by by you understanding the, the law enforcement mind of of these individuals you talk to, that's that's what I saw. Everything you said, I'm like I I saw a passionate dad, and don't get me wrong, some of the feedback I got was I see passion, and then there was the trolls like. Oh, you try to use your son for a storyline. That I'm like, y'all have no idea, like no idea, which y'all, with y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't know me. Y'all don't know nothing about my household. Like, I saw a passionate father. Like, like the mistakes you're making, I am trying to save you from a headache in another year, five years, ten years, whatever it is. I'm trying to get get you from in, from in front of this train that's about to hit you because I know it. I I, I went through it in the 80s when my dad said, stop doing this, stop doing that. Don't have all these people in my house. Don't get in that car uh, with these dudes, young dudes driving. Like all this, like I am, like when I say I'm blessed to be here, I can count a lot of times I should not be here. Me you know too. I mean? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So when I say, stop, my father, stop riding with these young Young guys just getting their life. Because in 16, we had our license in the 80s. Yeah. And sure enough, I'm not in school. We hooked school. We ran away. Everybody doing their thing. And I needed to go. I worked at Pizza Hut. And I needed to go get my check. And I said, man, let me grab. I had my learning. Tell the guy, the guy's 16. He's like, nah, you don't have your license. I said, man, just let me grab. You got your Man. No lie, I got in it. I was mad. So I got in the other car with another young brother. And I don't know the man above said, get out that car. I don't, I can't even tell you why I got out the car, but I did. You and said I it got, right. Well, yeah. The man I above. And I, I think my brain back then said, I feel bad because I was, because I, I kind of went on him for not letting me drive. And I felt bad. And he and he was like, I, so I got out, got in the car back with the first guy. And I and I know no lie. Five minutes later, we driving down Riverview Road in Fort Washington. And the car, the truck I was in, went around us and hit a car head on, and it killed the guy in the car. Flipped mm -hmm. over. They were damn near dead themselves. And yeah. all I was thinking was like, if I was in that back seat, I probably would not be. Here. Yeah. And of course, I had to hit again. Then I tell you, first of all, you should be in school. Second of all. Why are you in this car with these young, these guys are 16, don't even know what they're doing. Like, and and I used all those lessons because he used to tease me. He'd say, wait, you gonna have one one day and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. You're gonna get the same headache that I that you get. Oh, we get it back, don't we? Yeah, yeah. He used to laugh at me. And um, I just think back of all those lessons, and that's why I said, Yeah, I don't understand my passion. Like, and th then you add the police element. This is just my father raising me and then my police passion. You see All things that other people will never see. Right. Yeah. 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 So I just was that like, part. I just wish y'all could understand. Like, and Brittany, I feel like she got it. Brittany's about to be 33. She got it early on. So where I, <clears throat> my issues with her were more grown up issues like this buy a house. We're not doing apartments. I don't want to pay more. No, listen, you'll thank me later. But they didn't understand mm -hmm. it back then. Now she got a house. She like, damn, I should have listened to you. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what I was trying to tell you. <laughs> like a wise man told me that in ninety when I buy my house, ninety seven, our first house. An old timer told me that. I said, I want a townhouse. He said, Nah, buy a single family house. Da 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 da, and gave me all the reasons. I said, All right, cool. And I did. It. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just amazing how. You know, 
you know, parenting changes over the decades. Mm -hmm. and my life is on TV, so I got to get all the scrutiny of one little scene, me raising my voice or me doing this or me doing that. And then my cast, while I'm playing the alcohol game with me, oh, when Jamie been drinking, when he on the saw, I'm like, y'all don't even know. Like, I, I, I can, I can have, I can get mad because I'm passionate about what what me and him are arguing about, or me and Rain arguing about, and without being accused of being an alcoholic or a bully mm -hmm. or beating my wife. So they they said you was beating your wife. Yeah, they get oh season wow. one. You remember the scene when I touched her face to get her attention? Mm -hmm. That was the whole thing, like. And of course, with my cat said, "Oh, I would never touch my wife's face. Oh, he could never touch my." Face. Are you kidding me? If my wife is going to embarrass herself on national TV, I'm going to tell her stop. And that's and she was fussing, getting out of pocket. And I, I said, Raina, I'm talking to you. Like, listen to me." <coughs> and then they played it. The editing game made it dramatic than what it was. Yeah. And you just got to eat it. And that's why I felt like season two and now three, I was gonna control my own narrative. And then and then just listening to you talk, because you understand. Like, and you've been married as long as we have. You had kids like the same age. Like we we can literally have this conversation. Yeah. And uh and I just and, and you're that. relatable. So I mean, you, you can't please everybody. So I learned that a long time ago, right? So I really work on pleasing me. So, you know, you just stay true to yourself so that you can have a long game. Because, you know, people, you know, they always got something to say or want to weigh in. And a lot of times the, the way in, they don't even have their stuff together. So don't I don't stress over that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm not on TV like you on TV, but, you know, people might have comments about other stuff or, you know, just ignore it. Right. Like know that it's toxic and you, you can you can uh, delete. You could delete and block. Yeah. But you know what? My, I'm, I'm a Taurus, man. You know my birthday in 30 days. So. All right. So it's like, I don't know if you really deal with a real Taurus. Like, we are really stuck. My husband is a Taurus. I've been married to one for 32 oh, yeah. years. Yeah. So we don't like to let you get the last word. We we, we got to say something. And I'm telling you. when say I Say that mean, again so my husband can hear it. Y'all Y'all like to do what? We got to get the last word. Okay. Always. And I'm telling you, when I sit there and I read these comments, <clears throat> and it's, it could be a page with no followers, no nothing, and I know it's somebody that knows me. And I'm like, oh, I just want to say something. And, 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 I, and I try not to. And I just, I fight with that. And I'm going to tell you who, who really has been a big brother mentor to me, and that's I'll be sure. And you talking about somebody who's at the top of the, the totem pole in the 80s and like still relevant today as we see. And he said, he said, little bro, you cannot, he said, you're here. Like you cannot go down here and, and talk to these people, you know, respectfully, like the people that's attacking me anyway, not just fans of the show. Cause you know, in public, you see me, I show everybody love. And everybody who seen me in public that know me, I try to like their comments or at least respond when I can. But I always, because I know what it's like to, to not be on TV and just be who I am. So I've never tried to play this on TV. I'm better than anybody. That's just not my thing. Never will be. And you and you are so genuine. And like you said in my class for three days, and I never knew, I didn't know until another officer mentioned you were on TV. Like you were humble. You were in the class like everybody else. And then even since the show hanging out with you, I've seen you show everybody. Like, and even um, Irena, just beautiful, beautiful person outside, but beautiful spirit inside. Right. Like you can just you can you can just feel the genuineness. And I think I'm a good judge of character. Right. Because I'd be like mm -mm, shady or mm, something ain't right. And I, I just didn't get any of that energy <laughs> from either one of you or even your son. Even your son was a sweetheart. So, I mean, I just. You know, you can't, you, you're going to get consumed or overwhelmed if you try to 
respond to the negativity. You got to be like, that's not me. You know who you are. And the people who saying it don't know you. That's the other thing. Like these people don't know you and they're never going to know you. So they're looking at TV and developing opinion and they have a right to do that. Like if that's, that's what they want to do, let them have it. Don't you get, you got like, let's, let's talk about your project. Cause you want to some bigger things and things that's going to help people. That right there is a distraction. It'll throw you off your game. Right. And that you got to really be, you know, at, at your mm -hmm. level, you got to be careful of the distractions, because a lot of times we don't live our best life. We can't get to greater because we're distracted. And one of it sometimes by toxicity, but sometimes we distracted by other people. And you 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 got big things get ready to go on. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's with your help as well. And based on that scene, the feedback was so overwhelming. And the need for that conversation to continue, um, Dr. McAllister and I and my um, Jay that was in the scene with us, um, we very started the Jamie Tyler Foundation, which is going to target a, a broad area of mental health, um, first responders, um, whatever category. Caregivers. Caregivers. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and caregivers include people who at our age who might be taking care of their parents, but also pa parents who might be taking care of adult children with special needs, um, or just, you know, you have a, 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 a ill, a person who is not well, and you have to take care of them even as a spouse, um, talking about their mental health. Cause I think that's a, a space that people forget about. Yeah. But parent and child and just the trauma, because trauma affects all of us. You might be able to escape the mental illness, right? Because it can be hereditary, um, sometimes the other organic things. But trauma, you don't really get to decide. Like, my life was going so amazing. I mean, my in, in 2017, I had just celebrated 25 years. My life was in a really good place. I had just started a new job, and I loved my job really good place. And my daughter was killed. <clears throat> and I think we don't, you know, I, I, first of all, I have a girl, so I'm not expecting that. Right. So that trauma could have took me out. Luckily for me, I was healthy. I was in a healthy place and all right, Denise, that's my line sister. Okay. Um, but I was in a healthy place. So it didn't overwhelm me, but I've seen in the last seven years, I've met plenty of parents who've lost their children and it's consumed them. It's taken them out. Like they, they, they can't be productive. Um, and so you doing this foundation, like you speaking about it, people see a normal human being, somebody they can reach out and touch somebody that's from their home. You the homie, right? Like I saw how DC gives you love and you want to be talking about, I had some issues. I was hurting. Me and my son are struggling. And now to have a, found, a foundation, that's going to be huge. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate you for taking the journey with me as well, along with Jay. And um, once I start forming the board, I'll see if some of the other guys want to get involved on that, on that level of it. But yes, the Jamie Tyler Foundation is, um, is born. And uh, we're in the stages now putting getting everything all the way official and we have a save the date of may 19th of a kickoff community event which we're going to, we're putting together now as well but save before the that but before that i gotta put my promoter hat back on because i was honored and randy just put the link up i was honored to be asked to be the celebrity ambassador of the ayana j McAllister. Foundation. Legacy Foundation. And I'll yep. let you talk about that. So you can see Jamie strut himself on the runway. We are very excited to have him um, be a celebrity ambassador. Um, <clears throat> and we're talking everything gun violence. Uh, my daughter was killed by gun violence. She was a good girl, sweet um, college student, home from college on spring break. Um, should not have ever had come succumb to gun violence. But that's a reality in our community. Talk about reality TV. The gun violence is a reality. I share with people all the time that my um, daughter 
Uh, my Both of my daughters um, attended Largo High School, and that's the suburbs for the most part. But they had been to five funerals before they finished high school. This ain't Beirut. This is not a war zone, but it feels like that. And when you look at the number of people who get shot every single day in the DMV, it really is unreal. And so my husband and I wanted to do something in honor of her um, to deal with gun violence and really education and advocacy. Like, how do we teach people they deserve a safe neighborhood? How do they? How do we teach people how to request help? So even like when we talk about police brutality um, and we march, right? Like it's nothing wrong with marching. I don't have a problem with marching. The issue is we don't ask for anything. We march, we might riot and we go home. And, you know, I've heard people say, stop killing our men. But what does that look like? How do you really turn that into a policy? And so even we might want the same thing, but we're not asking in the right way. We don't we didn't know. And I didn't know. I personally didn't know. But I know now how to go up to Capitol Hill or to Annapolis and make them change some laws that really benefit and protect me. Right. And I, and and also talk about how the laws really aren't protecting us because People who carry guns, dangerous people don't care about the law. So changing laws is not the only thing that we need in our community. We need to change the access to guns. So I think that's a, a cause that everybody can get involved in. And so I'm just grateful for you lending your celebrity to us. Um, that, that really is huge for us. When I told my team, they were very excited. I'm very excited, and but also very grateful. And so that's why... I had no problem signing up with you like, yeah, let's do this mental health thing because I'm also passionate about that um, because that that really is another thing in our community that prevents us from being great. It prevents us from being great um, because we we don't we, we don't take care of our own mental health. We don't get the trauma resolved and it prevents us from being living our best life. And that's what I would want for everybody. Yeah. How many years has this been going on? Her, her benefit. This Saturday. is well, we you know, because of COVID, we didn't do it. So this benefit also supports scholarship um, for young people who are impacted by gun violence. So in our scholarship application, we are looking for people who have and you can go on our website to to apply for the scholarship. We want you all to do that or to share that. But impacted by gun violence. So I although I graduated um, summa cum laude, right? Like Dean's List all years in college. Um, I went to Shaw University. Yeah, yeah. Thank Put some you. clapping hands in the chat, y'all. Go but ahead. I, went, I went to Shaw University at HBCU, and I would say that was a school of a second chance because I did not have the grades to get in school. But once I got there, I, I was kind of like Eminem. I got one shot, and I was going to do it, right? And so that university literally saved my life. And um, and so speaking of that, like when when I once I graduated, I got married and I did all of the things that I was supposed to do so that my daughter getting killed wouldn't be a part of my life, that I wouldn't raise at risk kids, you know, stay married, raise my kids in the church. You know, me and my husband got cameras inside and outside my home. And my husband is a lot like you. My husband was a juvenile PO. So he was hard on our girls. Right. Like, no, you can't do this and you can't do that. I did sex offender treatment for years. So my kids wasn't spending the night. We weren't doing no spending the night out. So, you know, there was some hardships even for them growing up in a home because of what we did in our lives. But we were trying to make our, our kids safe. And even I had to deal with the reality that even everything that we did intentionally wasn't enough to keep her alive because we live in a place that really this can happen to anybody and I don't want it to happen to anybody. Like this is not the life you want. And I'll say one more thing. The reason I was able to heal from that is because I was already healthy when she got killed. I haven't always been healthy all my life. I had some issues myself. That's how I can recognize them. And that is the thing that I want for people because you never know when something is going to strike you and it really could take you out. And I mean, it could take you out mentally, right? Or it can take you out like you you just can't function. And so we want people to like work towards healing and really deal with their issues. Yeah. And I, I just noticed my mom just popped in. Hey, Ma, Sylvia. Hey, Hurt. Um, 
So somebody did ask how they could support even if they're not in DC. And I believe this website will tell them. Yes. So, yes, uh, please support us. Please get involved. Even if it's not my foundation, like there are lots of gun violence organizations out now and support it because we we need all hands on deck. Like this is not this is not saving the whales where you could decide, yeah, that's not really my thing. Like everybody deserves to live in a world where we can be safe and we can be safe from people who look like us because at the end of the day, that's where the violence is coming from. We killing us and we killing us because we <laughs> ain't healed from the trauma. And so like, that's why I, I coined myself as the public safety strategist because it all ties together. Right. And the other thing, I was able to forgive the person who killed my daughter. Right. Because I know our kids aren't born monsters. Right. Like I, um, Bruce Johnson interviewed me and he asked me what I would say to the person who killed her. And I said, I forgive them because I know one that unforgiveness wasn't going to help me. And I knew God had things for me to do. So I, I was able to forgive the person who killed um, her and be able to heal because healing I know was important and I needed to heal. And, and and guys in the chat and whoever sees this video, you can still donate. You can buy a ticket if you're not even here. You can just donate. It's on my Facebook. I mean, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. It's on Doc's pages. Share it. I mean, in this world of social media, supporting something as simple as sharing it. You don't even have to come. Just share it. You never know who... And your network has been affected by gun violence or mental illness. Like, just share the share the link, share the post, whatever whatever it is. Uh, text it to your friend that live in the DMV. Like, you might want to check it. It's a fashion show. It's a dinner. Um, you can get to meet me for those are fans of the Tyler's. Raina will be there. Uh, I believe Lil Jamie and Jason will be there. So it's going. And then anybody, um, our celebrity friends that show up. From the show, outside the show, come meet us. Like, we want to meet you guys, take pictures, and hug on you. You can hug on Doc and Doc's husband and just show them that, like, this is just my first year involved, and we're going we're gonna to stay a part of this until it's the biggest thing going on. Thank you so much. And anybody who would like to sponsor, please uh, reach out because we need some more sponsors. Thank and you so and, much. And that's on the same link as well, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave this link up so you guys make sure you get the link um, like I said it's on all our social media platforms um, and we're going to make and sure I'm we at Tyrese McAllister .com, um, on Facebook Tyrese McAllister and um, also on Instagram or you can reach me at my business Clinical Forensic Associates um, we have a Facebook and an Instagram too if um Raina, can you type those in the chat so they can see it? what she just said, or unless you can, I don't know if your computer right like there. I don't think I can. Yeah, I, you should be able to comment in the chat. Oh, in the chat, okay. Yeah. And then um they can get your website. So um the guys still hanging with us in the chat. I know we're an hour in. I know everybody got stuff to do. You guys have any questions for me or Doc or Raina? She's on here narrating everything. But um, we would love to answer some of your questions, whether it's got to do with the show, whether it's got to do with the, the foundation, uh, life in general. I don't know. But put your questions in the comments, and um, we see how many we have. Jamie, let me ask you a question. I see there was quite a few questions. If I go back later and look at the questions, can I then respond? Uh, you don't know. No, I'm new to this. Okay. I'm gonna say it. I don't know. I'm gonna try it. So because I want to make sure, especially questions on mental illness or mental health issues, I want to make sure that we can resp I can respond. Um, because we want knowledge is power, and the use of knowledge is even more powerful. Um, so I love for people to um ask questions about stuff they don't know, and I, um I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through it and and try to do that. I can tell you this: once we're done, it'll say to YouTube. Okay. And then it'll be up there. Now, anybody okay. tell me, you'll be able to see it. And then um, once I save it to my phone, I can send it to you. So you okay. can uh, It's not you. allowing me to join the <clears throat> chat. But maybe, um, Denise Jefferson, if you're still on, can you put it in the chat for me? 
It's my sorority sister. So what I'm thinking, I'm I'm I have the basic stream yard. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna probably have to upgrade it to where we can add some more features because and I have somebody kind of mentor me with all this because you you know I you know I'm a petty tar. So when our castmates came for my family, I said, okay, we're gonna make a YouTube out of y'all. The and the bull the bull came out. Yeah, and it just blew up in like two days, like one day, really. That first video I did where they attacked Raina and her and her credibility. That we went from 700 subscribers to like 5,000 in one day. Wow. And then the way YouTube works is once you get a thousand and like four thousand watch hours, then it'll invite you to the to this program. Okay. So I'm just learning all this stuff literally a couple of weeks ago. Okay. So what's our rain sign? She a Virgo. Yes, me too. So hold so, on, you know, we're two yeah. Virgo Taurus couples. Yes, yes. When and Virgo, Virgo, August thirtieth. So she's nine twenty-two. The last okay. day. Okay, but you know we're perfectly matched. Yeah, and I'm May second. Yeah, when yeah. Is it, my husband second? is May second. No way. I swear. What? May second. That's crazy. Hold on. Hold on. That's scary, really. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you serious? And y'all was just together. What was it, Monday? Yeah. Oh, that? yeah. Yeah, Monday. May oh. 2nd. Wait till this, I tell them. This is too much. Now, look at all, came, look at y'all said you gotta have the last word. <laughs> look at how these dots have lined up uh -huh. from, from how we met to, to right now. Like, I didn't even know that. Uh huh. That's, That's right. crazy. Yeah, I'll be 51 in May. Well, he's a little older. A <laughs> little bit, a little bit. And then he was in parole. Mm -hmm. I was in law enforcement, so. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's the universe. But I told you that. I've been saying it all along anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, now the, the, the immediate goal is to blow this event you have out and, and also save the date for May 19th. Um, for this kickoff, we're at, we're aggressively putting all this stuff together now, and um, I think you coordinated some appearances, mm -hmm. some people as well. Yeah, and it's a lot of love going into it. We're really trying. Um, this really is about service, right? Like, um, because honestly, you don't have to do this, right? Like this, you you don't have to, you don't need this, but your heart. That and that's what I'm saying. Like people don't. What you don't get to see on the show is your heart, right? Because you came to me. It was like, I'm thinking about doing this. I want to do it. It ain't like I came to you. You like, I, this is what I want to do. How do I put this together? Right. And like, how do, how do we serve people with this? Um, and like, people just don't get to see that. And I think it's amazing. And I think that's why I get so mad at the flack I was catching because they really don't know me. Like, you see me for 45 minutes on edited TV. And like what's not shown is this stuff like this. Like I try to help everybody. Yeah. And you know that. And, and my people that know me in real life know that. Like I I I I generally want the best for anybody in my circle. Like, how can I help everybody add value to each other? And we had that conversation. Yeah. Like we were talking <laughs> about this foundation. I'm like, but how can I help you too? I still want everybody to win out of this. And off camera, no cameras, no, you ain't have to do it. You gave me so many resources. My phone just kept blowing up. And then even when I thought you were finished, later on, I go back and you still sending me more resources to help me um, and to help my cause. And again, you ain't have to do it. There was no cameras there. Um, and so that's what people really don't get to see, like about you. So James Brandon has a question. Um, how can you help this with this foundation? So with Jamie's foundation, um, you got you did get your website the other day, right? Yeah, we, we got the domain. Oh, email? It's not it's not live yet. Okay, we so you want to yeah, give him so stay it. tuned, stay tuned, Mr. Brandon, so that you can um more is coming. I'm sure you're gonna be promoting it for the rest of the month. Oh, on yeah, the yeah. Once everything is up and running, yeah. But I also I, I didn't know people talking about your your foundation as well. As Help us event. both. <laughs> yeah. So James, she has a we have an event first up with Dr. McAllister on May 11th. 
and that was the um, website we had. Um, so yeah, if you want to support that, that's that'll be the week before before my thing. And um, yes, please be. I don't know how to do it, but I see it as well. So I blocked that page. It was a uh, spam page got on here. I don't know. I, oh. I just I caught it as soon as it. it just oh, okay. Went but um. But yeah, James, we appreciate it, man. And once we get it up and running, we have a full, full launch um, website, how people can be a part of it, and the mission, and what else, Doc? We're working on the tagline. I like the one. It's okay not to be okay, right? Like, we want to normalize that, you know, this is a rough world we live in, and you know, people really do need help and people continue. And it's 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 typical for African-Americans to try to be strong. You got the strong black man who can't cry, who can't say he got a weakness. And you got the superwoman black woman who feel like she just got to take care of everybody else. Um, and sometimes, you know, being strong means you're going to have a breakdown and cry. And even like when we, we talk about kids, people like I'm being strong for my kids. No, your kids need to know that life is tough. They need to see that you struggling, trying to figure it out, that you going to figure it out. But, you know, that the struggle is very real. And so, you know, I, we don't have to we don't have to be these superheroes like we life is tough. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I have uh, enjoyed this. Thank you so much for, you know, allowing me to come. You know, I'm a, a trainer at heart, so I'm always willing to teach people and educate people on mental health and trauma and how they can heal. Um, Because that's what I want for everybody. Because it's it's beautiful place over here in this healed space. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. Like when people say stuff and it don't even bother you. Like, what? Tripping. Let me what ask you this. For someone out of town, <clears throat> do you do like some kind of uh, virtual treatment? Like people can yes. get what you want to explain that? Yeah. So if you reach out to me, um, www.clinicalforensicassociates.com, clinical forensic, no S, associates with an S.com. And if you struggle with that, you can Google me because I'm, I'm, um, I ain't Jamie Tyler, but you know, I am, I'm Googleable. You are um, next to me now. So we locked in. <laughs> if y'all can't get it through her, hit me. I'll make sure you get it. Um, yeah, so um, definitely um, reach out to me and I, I'll talk to you about how that can work. So there's a question about how black men can get professional help. Um, great question. Yeah, I, I've been a therapist for a long time and I can tell you now most of my clients are men and black men. And I'm very excited about that because I really see a shift in our community. It's very important. Black men are getting going to therapy, getting help. Um, Jamie has helped that tremendously by being vulnerable and people now feel like they have permission that they can share it to police officers. When I do my training, um, I'm walking away with clients because people are getting healed. So, um, this is an exciting time, but any therapist can, can, you know, work with them. Sometimes I get, um, you know, what, what we are struggling with in our field is black male therapists or clinicians, you know, some men, you know, they're like, yeah, I really want to talk to a man. And I don't I don't even have a male therapist that works with me. The two people who work with me are women. Um, and, you know, sometimes I'm like, well, you know, give me a chance and see. And it works. All therapists aren't created equal. You know, sometimes you you job with one and sometimes you don't. And so don't give up on therapy if the first or the second clinician doesn't work. Um, I usually do very good with men. It hasn't been a problem. But, you know, I, I actually have lost a man because he had another he 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 settled with me because he had nobody else. Right. Like I was a runner up. Um, but then another male clinician became available um, and he went with that. I didn't have a problem with that because that's what that was his preference. Um, sometimes people want people of color. But, you know, if you have a good clinician, it really don't matter what color they are. Um, cause I don't have to have your situation or been through your situation to be able to help you. Right. Like I don't have issues with my mom, but I can help a person who does. Right. So, you know, I, I'm not struggling in my marriage right now. Right. Cause like, you know, 30 something years, you're going to have some struggles, but you know, I can help a person who's struggling in marriage and it might not be anything that I've dealt with. So don't let that be, 
Don't don't let anything stop you from getting healed. Like go for getting healed as if somebody was choking you. You know how somebody choked you, you're gonna get away from that chokehold. Right? You're gonna you you're gonna have some superhuman strength, you're gonna save your life. And that's what good therapy can do for you. It can really save your life. Yeah. And just to piggyback on that, <clears throat> that was the, the inspiration for me to to get where we are now with the, this foundation to show black men that it's okay to go seek help and um, mm-hmm. have these conversations. And I never thought it would be me. Um, I think it's Ayana spirit connecting us and I'm all in there. So we, mm-hmm. we're actively going to get this foundation up and running and we're going to get some events on the books and, and, and get these people the help they need. And Dr. McAllister is going to be my, my right hand teammate. Um, and Jacob Slatter, Jared too. Yeah. Is, is another partner. He he mostly deals with children um, and, and young people. Um, but we're going we gonna to cover all bases with this. And see, Jamie, this is a, um, D. Johnson saying they're, they're a caregiver. So there is a huge space for caregivers really needing some support because I think they're they're left out. Oh, uh, Zandra, ask your question again. I, I might, it's just, it keeps going up. But um, yes, D. Johnson, we definitely have caregivers in, in under this umbrella as well. I'm glad you uh, made that made that clear. Um, <clears throat> somebody said, it, "Are we doing this once a month?" I'm not sure if that was a question, but um, if Doc is free once a month, I have no problem bringing her on and give okay. you guys updates on what's going on. Um, I and we can do different topics so we can educate people too. So that'll be good. But I also want you guys to get on her website. Um, she has online treatment she does. Get your health insurance. So if you got cash, cash is always great. I'm and on LinkedIn as well. LinkedIn. Um, I'm always going to promote the business. You got to get your money. And I, I'm, I'm all for that. So you guys who are here tonight, I appreciate you. This is our first time doing this. We've been talking about doing it. And we finally got time. We both were sitting still to do it. But yes, this will be one of many. And we'll probably we can probably get Jay on next time. And he can talk about the youth and Jacob's ladder and what he's got going on. Yes. An amazing program going on. Amazing. We have somebody from um San Diego. Coach Chair Mendoza. Welcome from San Diego. See, we're gonna have a, a major impact. Nationwide, this is awesome. And then um, Ruby McCowan gave you a shout out. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. So, guys, I'm a, this video will definitely be in our in our queue, and then and shortly in our um, Doc's queue. Um, don't forget to like it, subscribe to both channels, and what's your YouTube doc so they can su- subscribe? I think it's Tyrese McAllister. I got to look. You know, you know, you got me on YouTube. I just got started. I got, I probably got ten videos on there. All right, well, we gotta get them numbers up because this, well, this will be on your as soon as I get it to you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we'll be at Oxen Hill four twenty four. Actually, I'll be kicking off my birthday weekend, April twenty fourth, at Felt MGM. Joy's going to perform. Joy Carter from the show, Secret Society for my DC folks that know about Secret Society. Hopefully the weather's good. We got a patio open and cigars, hookah, and we're going to celebrate as I get ready for 51. Awesome. So mark your calendars. And Dr. McAllister, um, I appreciate you so much. You know that. Same here. Um, you I guys, love you. Sale. You guys, make sure you follow her on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, follow her business page. Get her, get her website and make sure you guys, if you can attend the, the function on May 11th, you can definitely still donate. Any amount helps. It's all going to uh, one of these young kids who've been affected by gun violence. And that's what the mission is. All right. All right. Any Good night. Words Any departing words before we get out of here? Seek healing and leave space for grace. For others. And because when you do it for others, you give grace to yourself. 
It's a sweet place to be. And on that note, I have nothing further. Doc, I will talk to you soon. Okay. Give, give your husband my love. May I will. Birthday twins. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. You have a great night. I'll talk to you okay. soon. Okay. Okay. Right. Bye-bye. Bye, Raina. Bye. She, oh, she said thank you. She said good night. All right, guys. We talk to you soon.